What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's the Game Week 34 preview. So I'm going to go through a bunch of your questions and give you my opinion and hopefully help you along the way. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with a question on Garnacho. So what are your thoughts on Garnacho's minutes moving forward? Should we be worried? So there's really two things to talk about here. One is the early substitution in the last game against Bournemouth and two is the social media activity where he's liked a couple of tweets that have basically been, I would say, knocking Ten Hag for the substitution, essentially. So not saying great things about Ten Hag. You probably don't want one of your players liking posts like that. And it was from Mark Goldbridge, who it picked up a bit more traction than maybe it usually would. Actually, if you go back and look at Garnacho's liked tweets on Twitter right now, there's still one that he's liked, which basically says he shouldn't have been brought off uh, in one of the games against Chelsea or something like that. Maybe it was Crystal Palace. I can't remember the exact game, but it's not like this is the first time he's done it. Just on the early sub, um, it was at half time from what I remember. I'm just going to double check here. So that probably tells us moving forwards that he's not a guarantee to get 80 to 90 minutes every week. And if you look at the previous matches, it was 79 against Liverpool, 85 against Chelsea, 58 against Brentford. So he's mostly playing 80 plus, but not in every single game. I don't think it suddenly makes him a bad option. I still think from everything we've seen recently from Man United, he's still first choice ahead of Rashford and Anthony. And I wouldn't like to be in a place where Anthony is ahead of Garnacho because Anthony is terrible. Um, so going forward from an FPL point of view, 5 million is still a really good value pick. And the fixtures obviously coming up for Man United are good. Sheffield United, Burnley, Crystal Palace, and then the double in 37. In terms of the like tweets, like Ten Hag does have previous for kind of wanting to deal with this and kind of put his foot down. He has punished players in the past. Look what happened with Sancho. I do think that was a completely different situation, though. The fact that Garnacho was already unliked, it's, it's a bit strange we're even talking about this, right? But the fact that Garnacho was already unliked those tweets probably means it's been dealt with behind closed doors. And I think the good thing from an FPL point of view, not necessarily for the deadline, to be fair, but for looking at him as a long term pick, the Sheffield United game is on Wednesday, but there's an FA Cup game before that. So if he's going to be made an example of, it might be the FA Cup game that he misses and then he's back in the team for Sheffield United. I think generally my view would be not to panic about him. If you've got him for game week 34 and you want to play him, I would go ahead and do that as normal, unless Ten Hag says something in the press conference, of course. Um, and if you're looking at him for wildcard 35, then you've got two more games before you have to make that decision anyway. The one against Coventry in the FA Cup and the match against Sheffield United in game week 34. I don't think this is going to be a huge issue. I don't think it's a great look for Man United in general. You don't want players liking tweets like that about your manager. It just it just shows there's not it's not a great environment, I would say, right now. But from an FPL point of view, I still think at 5 million, he's a great value pick. And I wouldn't particularly worry about him. He'd still be first choice for me. He's still in Man United's best 11. But for 5 million... You know, expectations should be should be a little bit lower anyway. So don't panic. Move forward with the plan. If you were planning on bringing him in this week and you can just go for a different player instead, I'd maybe do that. But otherwise, I think you'll probably be fine. So who are the best one-week punts for people on wildcard 35 strategy? Now, I think this really depends on how low-owned the player has to be for you to consider them a punt. If you want someone that hardly anyone is going to own, I don't think there's actually that many players. Like, even if you look at Arsenal, Saka is going to be the highest owned attacker, but it's not like Odegaard and Havertz don't have any ownership at all. So you're probably looking at players like Elise at Crystal Palace. I think most people who aren't free hitting, who like you say, are just on a wildcard 35 strategy where they're dead ending this week, will probably go for Eze instead. He's been back from injury a lot longer. So I like Elise. Players like Cunha in the forward line. I think right now, outside of probably Haaland, Solanke and Darwin Nunez, Mateta's probably the next favorite among most people that are engaged that are watching this talking on twitter that's who i see kind of name the most but Cunha could be an option instead a bit of a differential i mean he's just scored two goals in the last game right so he's not going to be going completely under the radar so you could look at players like that but i think it's really difficult to get a proper low own punt who's actually good because if you look at the teams that are doubling like wolves for example people have picked up sarabia recently i personally wouldn't be buying him now I don't think he's a bad option to play in the double, but I wouldn't bring him in. I just worry a little bit about his minutes. If Aiton Yuri can get fit and Huang's going to play a game as well, Sarabia might be benched for one of the matches. Not a guarantee, but it's a slight worry I have. Huang, 
got 31 minutes in the last game. I think that's quite a good sign for him starting the next. But is he going to play both of them? Maybe. I think it's a possibility. But if you look at what happened with Cunha, he was bedded back into the team a little bit slower. So it's not a guarantee that Huang will start twice either. And even if you look at, I don't know, teams like Everton, for example, you know, Calvert-Lewin missed the last game. It didn't sound from what Sean Dyke said that it was a bad injury or anything like that. He's probably going to be back for the double. I don't think he'll play twice. One of the things that Sean Dyke mentioned was that the history of Calvert-Lewin, where you just basically don't want to risk him, and with games in quick succession, I just don't see him playing both games. So him and Beto might get one game each. That's not ideal. Like McNeil, like he's fine as a punt, but I think at that point you're just going almost differential for the sake of it. You might as well just get an Eze or a Havertz or a Diaz or an Odegaard, whoever it might be. Like McNeil could do fine, but I just he's just not for me. So I personally don't think there's a huge amount of genuine differentials. And, and I hate to say it and be so cliche, but wildcarding in itself in 35 is a differential over people that have already used it. So get into dead end. Just pick a player you think is actually good and just go from there. Because if you're looking for true differentials, I'm just not sure they're out there. Like, obviously, right, for Arsenal, if you don't have any Arsenal attacker, then picking up Odegaard or Havertz is picking up a lower own player than Saka, right? So that's a way to go differential. But it's not like they're one, two, three percent owned, right? So you can do things like that instead. Uh, and the other one, of course, right, who, who keeps getting mentioned a few times is from Sheffield United, which is uh I'm just gonna double check this. Yeah, Ben Brereton Diaz. Uh what a name by the way. Only five million, listed as a midfielder, done okay um in one of the games who was it against yeah fulham 18 pointer since then he's blanked but they have played liverpool away chelsea at home and brentford away so not great fixtures and on paper you could argue that sheffield united have got the best double game week burnley at home and man united away man united give up so many chances even sheffield united are going to get a chance against man united and burnley at home is a really good fixture so that probably is a true pump because he's going to get talked about a lot but he won't get brought in by many people they'll go elsewhere like Eze, Elise. Um, maybe who else am I thinking of? Cunha Mateta, players like that. If you want someone truly differential as a one week punt where you don't have to worry about them for the rest of the season because you're going to wild card, go for Brereton Diaz. Why not? But outside of that, I'm really, I'm really struggling for players like Trent, for example, is going to be a big differential if you're willing to risk the minutes. But obviously, there is a chance he only plays once. Bradley's out for two to three weeks, so that helps Trent. But Gomez can play right back and Robertson can play left back. So it's not a guarantee. We'll have to wait and see how many minutes he gets on Thursday. Arsenal, we've already spoken about. There's not really any defender punts, I would say. Uh, and that's about it. I think Bournemouth, Cliver, maybe, could be an option. But again, I just I don't think Cliver is so good as a differential that I would go for him over one of the more established midfield picks that most people are going to go for. So it really depends on what type of manager you are. How punty do you truly want to go? Diaz, um, Brereton Diaz, sorry, Elise, you know, whoever I just mentioned there. Who did I, I can't even, oh my God, I'm having a mare today. Cliver from Bournemouth. I, I really shouldn't make videos. I'm terrible at it. If you really want to go for a punt, it's players like that. Otherwise, just pick up someone good and then get your wild card on in game week 35. So which single game week players are worth keeping on free hit? We'll keep this nice and short. None of them. You're on free hit in a double game week. Live a little. You don't need any single game week players. No, I wouldn't go for Watkins or Haaland over a Mateta or a Cunha. I wouldn't go for Fernandez over Elise, Eze, Havertz, Diaz, Saka, etc. I wouldn't personally have any single game weekers. So would you go Havertz from Arsenal or Diaz from Liverpool this week before wildcarding in game week 35? Am I allowed to say that I'm not completely sure? Because I think they're both really good options. And when you look at the fixtures on paper, you probably do just about prefer Liverpool's because they've got Fulham and Everton, albeit both away from home, whereas Arsenal have got to play Chelsea, which I think they will get chances in because even in the game against Everton that Chelsea played, Everton could have scored. So Arsenal will get chances, but you just never kind of know how those games are going to go. It will definitely be a match that Chelsea are right up for. So I think on paper, I think I would just about prefer Liverpool's fixtures, but it really comes down to minutes. And I talked a lot about this on stream about the fact that Jota is back. And I think the player most at risk is probably Darwin, but that is not a guarantee. It could be Darwin on the left, Jota through the middle, and Diaz might get a rest as well. So I'm a little bit unsure about the Liverpool minutes. And with Havertz, I'm still, I'm not quite there in terms of thinking he's nailed on like Saka and Odegaard are. 
Now, obviously, I'm recording this. Not obviously, but I am recording this before the Arsenal Bayern Munich match. So that might change my opinion based on minutes and stuff like that. But most of us would be pretty shocked if Odegaard and Saka weren't in the team. I'm not sure I'm at that level with Havertz yet. But at the same time, I keep not predicting that he's going to get benched, but worrying about it. And it's just not happening. You look at his minutes since game week, when is it? Uh, 23. He's played 90, 90, 83, 75, 90, 90, 90, 65, 88, and then another 90 minutes. He's not really being rested that often. And I think he is in Arsenal's best 11 at the moment. He played more of a deeper role against Aston Villa, but most of the time he's playing as a number nine. I think Arsenal are better with him there than Jesus as well. So it is entirely possible that he'll just play against Wolves and then again against Chelsea. Like, I don't think he misses the Chelsea game, that's for sure. So is he going to miss Wolves? The Bayern Munich game's on Wednesday, and then you've got to play again Saturday evening. I think he'll probably start that game. So I don't know. I could be entirely wrong about this, but I actually think the Havertz minutes in the double might be better than they are for Diaz. But again, a lot of that might come down to how many minutes Diaz plays on Thursday as well. So it's quite close. It's all down to the minutes for me because I think they're quite similar players. I mean, Havertz feels like one of those players that is just a little... I think he, I think people have got that opinion of him that he does waste chances in front of goal. Like maybe a little bit like a Jesus or a Darwin Nunez. But ultimately, I think he's actually pretty good in that role. And he has scored plenty of goals recently as well. So he's in form if you want to go down that route. I, I don't know. I think it's so close. Honestly, I think it's almost flip a coin territory. If you've got strong opinions about who's going to get the most minutes, I would just go for that player because I think that's all it comes down to. I'm going to say Havertz. I think he gets more minutes in the double and although he's got to play Chelsea, it's a home match and I think they will give up chances. I think Chelsea have been a better team than their league position shows this year, but not that much better and Arsenal are obviously a superior team. So I'm going to say Havertz and hope that he plays in that number nine role and, and with Diaz, hope that he misses out. I'm mostly hoping that Diaz misses out one game because it means that Darwin Nunez's minutes will be better. But that is hope more than expectation. But yeah, I'm going to go around in circles here. I'll say Havertz. Let me know down in the comments below how wrong have I got that. Should it be Diaz instead? So if you can bench boost in game week 34 ahead of wildcard 35, should you? I can get to Neto, Zabani, Palmer and Haaland on the bench with a four-point hit. Now, if I had that bench with Haaland, I would definitely bench boost. Because if I've got him in my squad, I wouldn't want to not play him against Brighton away I know I've said that on a free hit I wouldn't include him and that is true I would go all in on the double game weekers but if you're not free hitting I, I wouldn't bench hard and I think when you're comparing bench boost say 34 versus 37 you've got to be realistic about what the bench actually is so here's what I would ask you if you took that hit and you had Haaland and I told you you're not allowed to bench boost this week would you still bench him because if you wouldn't that means that someone else is actually on your bench and having Harden there is just maybe trying to make you feel a little bit better about bench boost. You might have such a good 11 that that actually is something you would do. But if not, put the actual player on the bench and then compare it to game week 37. I think ultimately you need to get on a planner like on Fantasy Football Hub. Links in the description below as always. And work out what your wildcard 35 team will roughly look like. Don't put a huge amount of thought into it because obviously things could change next week. But have an idea of what the squad would look like, what the bench will be in game week 37. Are you happy with that squad? And do you think that 37 bench can outscore the one in 34? If you're happy with the squad and you think it will outscore, then delay the bench boost. And if you think it's close, I would just get it out of the way now. Because at least you know those players are fit. They're probably going to start. And, in, and uh, with Neto and Zabani, they should start both games. By the time you get to game week 37, who knows what the league situation will look like. There might be rotation. There could be injuries. Your bench might not be quite as good as it looks, you know, through a planner and stuff like that. The other advantage to bench boosting this week before you wildcard is you can have a better overall squad. Honestly, I would urge anyone that hasn't already to build at least a rough wildcard 35 draft because if you want to go all in on the doubles, it doesn't look pretty, right? And choosing defenders is quite difficult. Like you're basically going for triple Chelsea, triple Spurs. I mean, do, if I say that out loud now, do many people want six players from those teams? I know I'm going to do it because of the doubling 35. But it's not great. Picking Man United players, double, triple ups there. You know, a trip. I mean, triple up on Newcastle probably doesn't look quite so bad now. Isaac Gordon plus one defender is probably okay. But then Man City players, 
you know, Haaland, fine. Foden, fine, although he might get rested a few times. But then which defender do you pick? Or do you go for Edison? A lot of people don't like owning him. But there's a lot of players you've got to pick and probably very few from teams like Liverpool and Arsenal. Whereas if you bench boost now, like if I bench boost in 34, I'm pretty sure on my wildcard team in 35, I would have Raya, Gabriel and Saka. Whereas if I don't bench boost this week and I go in 37, I'll probably just have one of those Arsenal players. And therefore my team might not look quite so good outside of 37. I think one game week that people are worried about is game week 38. Because I think in that week, let me just double check here. I think Arsenal have got yeah Everton at home and Liverpool have got Wolves at home. Both good fixtures, both at home as well. Like going into that week, the plan on 35 wildcard would be to have two free transfers, but something might go wrong. You might only have one. And all of a sudden you're short on those players and a lot of other people will have them. So that could be a worry. But on the flip side, right, just to provide a bit of balance to this argument I'm creating myself, you know, we might get to game week 38 and the league title might be completely over and Arsenal and Liverpool might be rotating and actually it might not be such a big thing. Maybe Spurs are still going for top four and you want to keep your, you know, Madison, Sons, whoever it is against Sheffield United away. So it's not, it's not a right or a wrong answer. I think generally with chips, if you think you can make really good use out of them, I prefer to use them earlier because you've got that knowledge about what's happening right now. But on the flip side, some people might say, I'd rather save them for later because it's the unknown and it might actually be better down the line. But I think with stuff like bench boost and triple captain, that's less of an argument, I think, or a justification. I think holding chips like wildcard and free hit for the unknown, fair enough. But bench boost and triple captain, I think you just use them when you can get the most points, and that is it. So if I had Neto, Zabani, Parra, and Harlan, I would go for it. But I guess it all comes down to what you're taking the hit for. But the big advantage to using bench boost now before wildcarding is you probably get a better overall squad. And essentially, you're picking less players that are either rotation threats or, or just haven't been great options so far this season. But some people might like going, you know, all in on, on differential players for 35. So like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm close to the bench boost. I think I'll eventually put it off. But I would go and make a squad and then figure out if you like the differences between the two. So what are your thoughts on not free hitting this week? I have eight doublers and three single game week players who are Anana, Garnacho, and Haaland. Now, in this particular case, I probably wouldn't free hit because the single game week players are decent enough, right? Haaland is perfectly fine to play against Brighton. Man United have got Sheffield United at home, so that looks good. As long as the eight doublers are, you know, key players that are probably going to start twice in most cases, like triple Liverpool, triple Arsenal, maybe a Solanke, Eze, whoever it is thrown in, you're probably fine not to free hit. And then I'd just use it in game week 37 instead. The only week that that is then a bit weird is game week 35 when Spurs and Chelsea have a double because presumably if you're in this situation, you don't have many players from those two teams and you're going to only have one or two transfers in 35 to kind of sort it out. But I think overall, you'll be able to hold those Liverpool and Arsenal players through and then just free hit them out in 37, which probably will work quite well. In general, and this is maybe a learning point for next season instead, you kind of want to have an idea of when you're going to free hit in advance because then you can change your plans accordingly like i know i'm going to sound like a broken record but free hit is not just about the week you use it in it's also about the weeks around it so anyone that has known for a while they're going to free hit in 34 will have already started bringing in players from spurs from chelsea from newcastle even etc you know who are definitely going to uh, sorry who are going to have double game weeks after 34 so they're using their transfers now to plan for the future whereas if you're not quite sure when you're going to use it you're almost in limbo i guess you've been planning for 34 and you've got a good team so it's it's going to work out all right and then you can just free hit in 37 but the spurs chelsea double kind of muddies that a little bit if you're someone that doesn't want to go all in on that double that's perfectly fine i think you just free hit 37 instead um and in game week 38 as long as there's not a huge amount of rotation you'll look good with arsenal and liverpool players so yeah i think if you're in this position where your team looks good for 34 you should probably just not free hit but ideally in the future you do want to think about when you're going to use it because that will change your transfers but i guess it's not the end of the world to leave it open like it sounds like you're in a pretty good position for 34 so you can just keep keep going right see how your team looks for 37 if it needs a free hit great if not just use it in 38 and go for a few punts
So is removing Haaland for Mateta before wildcard 35 a good move? Now, I've already said a few times in this video, if I was free hitting this week, I would go all in on the double game weekers. But there's something slightly different from a kind of a psychological point of view about actually transferring Haaland out for a double game weaker. I think, for me, it would be a last resort transfer where if everything else is looking good, there's no injuries, the players you've got are probably going to start twice, they're really good options, you've got nothing else to do, then I would maybe use a free transfer on going Haaland to Mateta. I would rather have Mateta this week than Haaland, but if it's for a hit, I wouldn't do it. And if you've got a different move you can make instead, I would concentrate on that. I'd also think about how much value you've got tied up in Haaland because you will want him on your wildcard in game week 35. I think he's one of the players that will be definitely locked in for most people. So make sure that you can afford your draft if you sell Haaland. Like again, just to use my team as an example, you know, I've got I've got two free transfers. I'm going to deal with Bradley and Son. Haaland out for a hit to Mateta is just not worth it. If Bradley was fully fit and Trent was out and, you know, Gomez was a, a bit of an issue and Bradley was going to look like he was going to start twice, then maybe I'd just keep him and sell Son and Haaland and go 11 double game weekers. But in some ways, I'm kind of happy that I don't have to make that decision because Haaland, I think, is a good option against Brighton. So as if your team is perfect, you've got nothing else to do, I would make that move. But make sure that you can afford to get Haaland back. Most of you probably don't have a huge amount of money um, tied up in him because he was injured for a while, so people sold him. Uh, for me, for example, I bought him at 14. He's now 14.3. If I sell him, I can get 14.1. So it's only 0.2 million to buy him back, which is more than doable if you're going to go without Salah from 35 onwards. But yeah, is it a good move? <laughs> Ask me again, you know, this time next week after we've seen the double game week for Mateta. I do think he's playing really well at the moment. And, you know, the underlying numbers for Crystal Palace over the season are not great. They're in the bottom five for expected goals generated but i think they're playing well under the new manager and i also think the fixtures for them are quite good in the double and that front three of eze mateta and elise look good against liverpool and also it's worth saying the palace maybe haven't been great this season but they haven't always had those three fit can they stay fit through these next few games we'll have to wait and see but if they can i think it's a completely different um crystal palace attack essentially so yeah i i, I don't think it's a bad move but I would also say that I'm happy I don't have to do it myself. So would you triple captain Salah this week or wait for Haaland in game week 37? And I think this goes back to what I was saying earlier, that with the triple captain and bench boost chips, you kind of take the points while you can. And as long as you think Salah's a good option this week, I would triple captain. And I think he is a good option, right? I know he's not returned that well recently and performances maybe haven't been up to his high standards. But Fulham away, Everton away is a good double game week. And as long as he comes through that Atalanta game on Thursday without any knocks or injuries, we can be pretty sure he's going to start both games. Is it a guarantee? I guess not because of Liverpool's fixture schedule. They've got a game on, obviously, Thursday, Atalanta. Then it's Sunday against Fulham. And then the Everton game is on Wednesday. And then they play again in game week 35 against West Ham on the Saturday. And it's the 12.30 kickoff, which Klopp hates. So at some point, even Salah might get rotated. But I'm not convinced it'll be in either game in 34 while they're obviously still chasing the league. And I also think, I spoke about this in a different video, if Liverpool can get two wins, that puts pressure back on Man City because they play before Man City play against Brighton. So it could be that they come away from Fulham and Everton with six points and suddenly they're four points ahead of Man City. And look, Man City will have a game in hand and I'm sure they'll beat Brighton, but it at least puts a little bit of pressure on. So I think Salah will start both games whereas with Haaland in 37 there's a bit of an unknown we know what the fixtures are and they're pretty good right he's got Fulham away and Spurs away but we don't know whether he's going to be fit right he's probably not going to be suspended right but injuries could be an issue by game week 37 the league might be over he could be getting rotated if they're still in Europe and so I think in this case if it's a close decision I would just go for it now why you kind of know what's going on. If that makes sense, right? It could be that we get to 37, the league's still on, Haaland starts twice against Fulham and Spurs, plays 90 minutes and absolutely smashes it, but it's not a guarantee. So I would prefer to use the triple captain now because I think Salah is a good option. Obviously, if you disagree with that, just don't use it. It's your chip. You can wait until later on. I did hear um, James on Planet FPL make a, a good observation that 
Yes, Harlan got rotated last year once the league was over because they were still in the Champions League. But also he had the golden boot wrapped up, whereas this year he probably won't, right? Cole Palmer is currently equal. Harlan would have to score a lot of goals over the next couple of games for that to be an absolute lock. So maybe he will play more. But I think ultimately, you know, when you're playing for Man City, yes, of course you want Harlan to go and win the golden boot. But getting the treble is probably more important. So I personally think we probably will still see rotation once the league is over. It's just about how soon that will happen. So long answer, I would triple captain Salah this week. Anyone disagree with that? I mean, there are other options. Son in game week 37, Burnley at home and Man City at home. Palmer or Son in game week 35. It doesn't have to be Salah this week, but if it's a choice between those two, I'd go for Salah. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed that video, give it a like. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you rate five stars if you listen on podcasts, and I'll be back tomorrow with a team selection video.